We are just a few psukim into Parshat uh, Vayera's story about Akedat Yitzchak, and yet we've been studying it for many, many weeks. We continue to study it. So uh, last we learned, we talked about the end point of the three days of the discussion of the debate, inner debate, uh, Avram Avinu, inner debate, Yitzchak Avinu, rather, external uh, obstacles, the idea that the obstacles come and go, that they, they're what a person has to contend with in the Nisayon when the test comes. Um, we grappled as Avram Avinu is grappling, Yitzchak Avinu is grappling, all these different elements of uh, that make up the uh, and compose the the journey, which is a physical journey, but also does have an element of the um, uh, what's the word of the symbolic, metaphorical elements that what is going on for Avram Avinu Yitzchak Avinu in terms of the struggle uh, towards the, uh, the Akedah. And I was trying to make this point, just that Hazal are trying to signal to us the degree to which there is a moral quandary and, 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 and heaviness about this. And uh, there are, to be fair, there are uh, various um, uh, commentators. Um, I, I think they're in the minority. They wanna position the story of the Akedah as completely one of joy and without angst and, of uh, going to do Hashem's bidding. And that's why the tor- story is told in such a simple, direct way. It doesn't mention that anybody's crying. It doesn't mention that anybody is uh, aggrieved or, 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 or thinking about things. Uh, my uh, Rebbe in particular, Huda Amital Zatzal, uh, and, and others, not only him, but he's the one who first comes to mind because he wrote extensively about the subject of the Al-Qaeda, uh, think that, no, it really is about uh, really uh, heaviness and a struggle and uh, and, a, and a moral um, wrestling that's going on. And none of that detracts. In fact, it amplifies the idea that Avram Avinu, Yitzhak Avinu, the great uh, paragons of spiritual strength and virtue that they went ahead with it. Nonetheless, um, again, there were those more, most prominently, by the way, of all people, Rav Cook thought that this was the utter um, display of serenity and com- composure on the part of Avram Avinu. He went with joy to do the mitzvah, and uh, there was there was nothing else there. Now, in Rav Cook's camp, if you will, you know, I'm not doing him justice. I'm quote you the whole thing in inside, but just to show an example of where uh, Rav Cook didn't just make it up, uh, and in fact, it's possibly on a certain level the view of Rashi. If you look uh, on uh, pasuk vav. Um, which is basically what we're what we're up to. So Pasuk Vav teaches us Vaikah Avraham Ratseho Lava Yasamal Yitzhak Beno Vaikah Bido to Aish Betamachelat by El Hush Nehem Yahdav. So the just on the level of Pshat, they took the wood and uh, the wood was placed upon Yitzhak to carry the wood for the Korban. Uh, seems special wood, and there was no wood all the way there. They brought the wood with them from where they came. It's a schar to, to prepare for the mitzvah. I see your, uh, your question. Whoever just wrote in, but give me a minute to just lay some ground before I take the question. So uh, hold, hold on over there. Um, uh, he put it upon Yitzchak. Yitzchak should carry it. He took in his hand. The ash means the fire, means whatever they were going to use to start the fire, presumably. Flint, whatever, whatever it is. And the ma'achelat is the knife. And the two of them, look at Rashi, Rashi, not Ma'achel, just for want of time, the second Dibur Matchel and Pasuk Vav, verse 6, the two of them went together. Avraham, uh, Avram, who knows that he's going to slaughter his son. He goes with a sense of will, meaning desire, besimcha and joy. Just like Yitzchak, who does not know what's about to happen. So one of them has the, ignor- the, la- the latter. Ignorance is bliss, maybe. He doesn't know. He's going along. And the, his father, Avram Avinu, knows what's going to happen full well, but he goes with a sense of purpose, a sense of joy. Now, how to reconcile Rashi with all the various Midrashim that we saw, I think, is just to say that Avram Avinu, came to a place of Ratzon and Semcha, but it was after a, um, what's the word, a, um, a, a fiery kiln of, uh, 
of 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 doubt and of uh, uh, I don't mean doubt in the sense of not taking the steps forward, but as he's going, there is a a spiritual process that's unfolding where the satan is trying to engage him, to throw him off kilter, to distract him, to uh, defer him, to uh, uh, throw him off course, and all of that is part of the process to get there. Alternatively, Rashi is cholik on those midrashim. He doesn't quote those midrashim about the satan speaking and the river coming, and we don't have any of that. So maybe uh, Rashi says. It's a matter. I don't take that matters. To me, the pshat is they went together where one one knows and is happy, and the other one is going without any knowledge, and they go together. And then the second pasuk, or the two and three, they go with the partner pieces, pasuk Zion, pasuk Chet, which we're going to read a bunch of times today. Yitzchak says to his father, Avraham, Avi, my father, it's like Abba, his father says, here I am, my son. And he says to him, behold, here is the fire and the wood. Where is the lamb for the offering? Picking up at the end of verse 6, back to verse 6, the last three words, now those same three words appear at the end of Pasuk Chet, the two of them walk together. Rashi, Pasuk Vav, tells us the two of them walk together together one knows, one does not know. One is walking in the knowing. One is walking in the unknowing. And then by Pasuk, by the time you reach Pasuk Chet, look at Rashi, Yireh lo haseh, yivchar lo haseh. God will choose for us the lamb. V'im ein seh, and if there isn't a lamb, le, comma, le'ola b'ni. You, the, le'ola b'ni, excuse me, let me read it. Uh, to, to an elevation offering, my son. Now Yitzchak understands, he knows what's going to happen. Nonetheless, they walk together now of common purpose, with a common, with a, an equal heart. So just, just try to just to understand Rashi, the shot level of Rashi is Avram is on a certain a point of uh, understanding or being settled with what's going to happen. Yitzchak in Rashi's rendering has no idea what's coming. The two of them have this brief oblique dialogue, a result of which they go together, Belev Shaveh, that Yitzchak takes from his father the, uh, the, the, now the knowledge, he accepts it. And there is a Masora here because Avram Avinu heard it from God, he heard it from Hashem. Yitzchak didn't hear it from Hashem. He only heard it from Avraham. But the son listens to the mitzvah of his father. The Masora, if you will, is not broken. Au contraire, the parent and the child, father and son, they walk together now, now that they both are on a par, an equal footing of understanding what's going to unfold. So this is a very powerful idea, needless to say. Um, and since needless to say, I shouldn't have said it's a powerful idea. It stands on its own two legs. It might need my superlatives. Um, the idea that Yitzchak went from not knowing to knowing. He went from walking in ignorance, but following whatever my father wants, just to help my father, he's going to offer some offering, now realizing it's about him. And in a certain way, here is now the shift between it being a Nisayon of Avram Avinu, according to Rashi, to become a Nisayon of Yitzchak Avinu. Now, of course, a lot of this will also depend on what is going to happen vis-a-vis, -vis, or what is happening vis-a-vis -vis the age of Yitzchak Avinu in this in this moment so um that is something to uh to consider as well uh in this in this mix which we'll come to in uh in a in a couple uh in a couple of minutes um so um let me i'm gonna put it on the screen and i'll give it to you to hold in hand we're gonna look at the radak over here the radak of david kimchi uh one of the uh uh provence I'm going to put it up on a screen so you can see it inside. Hope I get the right one. Let's see. And this is the right one here. So No, the wrong page here. This page on the screen. And I'm looking at the Radak. I'm putting it on the screen so everyone could see it. Where Avram tells his son, I didn't, we didn't delve into the semantics yet of the dialogue itself, but the, the response itself, uh, just to draw, drill into that. So he tells him, Vayomer, Here's how we normally do it. Vayomer, and he said, Elohim God will show us the lamb, my son. Meaning, don't worry. We don't know yet, but you and I live in the not knowing. We'll both know soon. 
right? And we don't have any other dialogue, not before, not after. This is the little speech between them. So they walk together. Yitzhak was content with that. On the level of shot, you could have just read it as Yitzhak hears his father say, I don't know, we'll know soon. Okay, whatever you say, Abba. Rashi says, no, he understood full well what it means because the way to read it, says Rashi, is Vayomer, he said to, Vayomer Avraham, Avraham said to him, by the way, Radak skips out the word Avraham, but Vayomer Avraham, this is what Avraham said, Elohim Yirelo Haseh, God will show us the lamb, comma, and if not, Le'ola Bani, right? If not, then it's you. The Radak seized on this and ex- understood as follows. It's something, a response that could have been understood in one of two facets. Or you could say, as we would say in English, borrowing from the French, a double entendre. Double entendre. Uh, one thing is being spoken, but I hear two things. Uh, later on, from a halachic vantage point, we'll have uh, God spoke one thing, I heard two. That's an halachic plane. We're not in halacha over here in this section, but he gave him an answer that could be understood in one of two ways. Ha'echad, one of the ways. Sheyebni, tshuvata kriya. Kimo hinenibni. He answered him, my son. Right. So he was answering him, my son. Bni, elokimi reila haseh. And therefore, how he it spoke to he spoke to him. He says, Avram said, my son. God will show us the lamb for, for, for elevation, right? Klamar. I don't know. I don't know who it's going to be. God will show us. We don't know yet. We'll know when we get there. The Asheni, I mean, it could be, it could be, uh, could be there's going to be a pen there with animals. Could be there's going to be a ram whose horns are stuck in a, in a bramble. Uh, now, the Asheni, the second way, Elohim Yirelo Hasela Ola Bani, Umiyo Hase Benihu. Right? So the, the second way is as Rashi reads it. Right? The Yitzchak Hevin, Ki Hu Yiyeh Hase. And Yitzchak understood from this. He intuited, I am the Lamb. The Fiyah Chamar, therefore it says, Vayechus Yim Yachtav Klamar, Belei Vechad. Ki Kibbal HaBen Me'ahava, Limsor Nafsho Lakel, Lakriva Lefanav. Yitzchak accepted with love that he was going to, uh, to uh, give his uh, soul uh, to Hashem. Uh, and to offer it before Hashem. Now, Radak, what's he saying that's different than Rashi? If you came to the Beit Midrash and all you had was Rashi and you didn't you didn't have any other par- Parshan Amikra, and you under- remembered that Rashi once said back in Parak Gimel of Sefer Breshid in Pasuk Yotet, that my job is to tell you the Pshat, then that's the answer. When Avram spoke to his son, he was telling him very clearly, you're it, God will choose it. And if not, if there's no lamb, so the you're it. Now, this isn't just Rashi talking. It's the Medrash, the Medrash Rabbah. But the Radak wants to open up for us the possibility that there's two channels going here. There's the channel level of understanding and the level of pshat that he simply just told him, I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. I really don't know either. And to the Radak, it's not clear that uh, that Avraham Avinu has uh, ever conveyed it to Yitzchak Avinu. Only when they get there, you know, he tells them, I have to tie you up to the last minute. According to the second reading of the Radak, which is what is in Breshit Rabbah, which is what Rashi explains, there's a more uh, of a nuanced understanding that really Avraham is telling Yitzchak essentially, oh, uh, you're, you're the lamp. Now, we need to understand where does this come from the level of pshat, like where does it mind from? The very fact that Pasuk Vav and Pasuk Chet end with the same two, the same three words. It's superfluous. They walk together. Well, how else did they walk? Separately? We don't need it the second time. In fact, we don't even need it the first time. Or Done. That's it. They walk together, and here's a dialogue between them. And right now, this dialogue, the, again, on the level of Rashi, but from the Medrash and based on the on the Radak, it gives us an understanding why the Torah would repeat the words Ve'achus Shnei Mechdav. As I'm trying to show you is why did Rashi jump for the Midrashic understanding and not allow for the possibility that um, really, I don't know. 
that's the that's the seems to be the pshat, right? So it would seem that Rashi highlighted these words. Also, how do I know? Because look at the Dibur Matchil. The Dibur Matchil pasuk vav is Vayel Chushneim Yachdav. It already piqued Rashi's curiosity. The two of them went together. Oh, well, we know that. It says they already told the two lads, you stay here, we're going. So that's obvious. The highlight of it is the, the fact that it's amplified. Something's going on there. The two of them walk together for Rashi is the disparity in knowledge. And then the second time is the common knowledge. The idea for the Radak is I don't have to choose one or the other. I can see it in, 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 these, in, in a way that the answer itself and that, let's go back to the beginning of Radak again. He answered him a response which a person could understand in one of two ways. It's not a foregone conclusion that he's going to understand it on the level of your it. He could have understood it on the level of, I don't know, we'll see when we get there. Now, why didn't Avram just answer directly to his son? What are the possibilities? Why don't you just say to, to Yitzchak, um, Ataha Ola Bini? Right? He, he could have said that. Wouldn't it have been much simpler? Or, or doesn't it depend on the age of, of Yitzchak, which we, we still don't know? Um, if you say that to what a 37 year old man uh, and he doesn't want to do it, he's off. I mean, you know, he can. And, and if he doesn't want to do it, he's going to understand from this, there's no doubt now. It's not right. like. My father forgot to bring the lamb. My father just told me I'm the lamb. Now I got to figure out what's going on over here, right? Right. And with a kid, with a little kid, oh my God! I mean, you know, that's that's almost, that's like well, of course, sacrificing your kid is child abuse, but telling them before you sacrifice them is even more child right. abuse. Right. It's not really abuse, though. It's actually murder. I mean, abuse implies the person lives to fight another day, but actually, sacrificing one's like killing one's child is actually murder. Yeah. And and that's the point. If he's five, six, he's a little boy. So when Avram, his father told him, don't worry, Hashem will show us who what it will be, my son. And it, if Yitzchak was a, a spiritual virtuoso and he figured out that's what it is, that's because he's on a level to understand that if he's not, then he's not. Now, there's something else here also. There's something else. And it's the thread that starts from the very beginning where God tells, uh, yeah, Rashi already picks up on this idea, right? Because Rashi is another problem that is also a problem we have to sort of reconcile. We generally understand the Akeda as Hashem said, do A, and then really he said, not A. The point was, were you going to go through with A because I said A. The problem is, then it, it, it pretty apparent, God contradicted himself. He said, do it, and then he reversed himself. Rashi threaded a needle. It wasn't really just Rashi. It was really based on Chazal that when Hashem said to Avram Vidu, elevate him upon a mountain, the implication of what those words are from a metaphoric perspective, it's a dead metaphor. Like if you say, go to the Rosh Hahar, nobody thinks you mean that a, he- that a mountain has a head on it, right? But the head is always at the top. Well, that's the expectation. Mm-hmm. So Rosh Hahar is the top of the mountain, right? I learned this from my, my teacher, uh, uh, um, um, one of my teachers, uh, 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 Rabbi Cohen, whatever. So it was uh, one of the uh, uh, professors at Shiva University, Shiva College, and in Bernard Revel Graduate School. So, uh, okay, so it's called a dead metaphor. Nobody thinks of it that way anymore. You understand? Because we, we, we already, we jump, we say, me at the top of the mountain in English, but in Hebrew you say the Rosh Hahar, everybody knows what that means, right? So uh, I don't know, in Parshat Korach just now, so the, the Mishnah says that Hashem created the Pi Ha'aretz, right? Or the or, or, or Moshe Rabbein, use the expression, if the earth will open its mouth. So if you're five, you think that's what it means. But that's not Pi Ha'aretz, it means that it's going to be an opening. It looks like a mouth, but it's not actually literally a mouth. The, the earth is not actually eating, like consuming something. The Mishnah and Ava talks about pi ha'aretz and, and parak uh, hey. So what's the idea? It's called a dead metaphor. Like you already jumped to what, what it really means. Okay. So what, it, what does it really mean? 
An ola is a type of an offering. That's what it means. Ola is an offering. But the word la'alot, right? Or if a person says they're making aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, it's not necessarily topographically higher. If you live in the Himalayas, you're higher. It's from a spiritual perspective. Everyone understands that. So God never said to Avram Avinu directly, slaughter your son. The fact that Avram Avinu is taking wood and a knife and fire it makes it pretty obvious that he does understand it that way. It's not that he misunderstood Hashem. Hashem said, and that is the common understanding. But the fact that he didn't say, leaves open the door. Again, it is sort of going back to more basic level of what are the words, but it left the door open. And especially, and here now I'm making a little bit of a leap, if Yitzchak Avinu is five or six years old, but once they're already walking and carrying the wood and you're carrying the knife and he carrying the, the fire, you know, everything's, uh, so where's the sa? Cause you know, we, you know, because now I see that the word Ola didn't just mean to go up, which we're going up, but it means there's a sa involved since we're holding all of these items. And in the response of Avma Vinu, the response is uh, God will show us. Oh, Helen came to join us. God will show us the lamb for an elevation offering, right? That's actually what's spoken here. Welcome, welcome. You want to sit right over here? Thank you. Yeah, let me move over, give everyone a little more space. Okay, still lots of room. Anyone who's on the phone, if you ever want to join us, we have lots of space. You can come see us over here in person. Okay, good. So the very fact that at the moment when the question is being asked, there's a response that is itself ambiguous God will show us the lamb, will show us the offering, comma, and you, my child, will be elevated. You'll be an elevation. Now, at that point, you could say, it means if, if God, and Rashi added the words, what was the words? If there's no lamb, then it's you. Now, what actually happened in the story in the end? Avram elevated his son, Yitzchak, brought him up the mountain, put him upon the Mizbeach, elevated him. And then what actually, actually happened? They did find the set. Where was it? Caught in the bramble. And what ends up uh, emerging from these psukim then is that at no time does Avram Venus say something that doesn't actually come true either according to the Rashi reading. And if not, Rashi says, but actually what played out? God will show you the, show us where the lamb is, what the, the offering will be. It will be for the sake of the elevation and you're getting elevated. Not killed, elevated. It's not the same thing. You follow? Now, that's all, I think, that's the ambiguity. Vayomer Avram. Elohim when he could have just said Ataha Ola, right? Or he could have not answered him. You're gonna you're gonna kill me, but Lahab no, I'm not gonna kill you, but I do want to well, hear, but yeah, but but try to say whatever you're saying since we're being recorded, at least right. temper it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm being trying to be temperate and I'm saying Lahavdil, okay. but um in Malach worship. Or anything like that. Molech, when they Molech walk, worship. Molech worship. Yeah, Molech, when they yeah. walk their kid between it, the, from what I understand, the kid doesn't always die. There's a possibility that the child will make it through, and that's all the will of the God. So it, in this thing, it sounds an awful like an awful lot like that. Like you leave it up to your God, which our God's the right one, their God's a phony one. But it sounds tremendously like it, where it upsets me tremendously. So how do you? I, I hear you. I'm, I, 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 there's a big discussion about what the Molech worship consisted of, and again, the whole test here is that Avinu is trying to reconcile why did Hashem ask for this to happen. Now, in the end, there is no fire under uh, Yitzchak that is lit. Uh, there's no passing him through fire, anything like that. The whole point is that there is, in the end, that substitution. And it becomes the case that proves the rule that this is that we do not actually do this. Like that's the whole point. 
is the okay. negation of it because of the parallel. And I'll show you another negation that's the parallel. The negation of the parallel is these two Na'arim who are along for the ride. The very fact that they come along is so mysterious that the Madrash decides that these two are actually Ishmael and Eliezer. That's strange. Like, why don't you just say they're two Na'arim? Who cares who the Na'arim are? They're two sidebar people. The Medus wants you to know it's Davka them because Davka, they're the foil. There's the, the unchosen. And it is Davka making it so close. And that is the whole point is to come to the edge, but not to actually go over in terms of the human sacrifice piece. Okay. What about in Malachim, we learned the, uh, oh God, it must be in Malachim too. The idea that uh, the Jews were going to win some kind of battle against the Moabites. I believe it was the Moabites. And then Mesha sacrificed, their king sacrifices his son. Yeah. And God switches the battle. God takes the human sacrifice. This is, a, this they, is not it's something we can do now. Shelly, this is a Malachim Bet Sugya. It's an important Sugya. You're right. You're asking the right question. I can't I can't entertain it in the Akeda discussion because it's not so clear exactly what's going on over there with Mesha, with the sacrifice. With, uh, with the with the with the with the with the Moabite king with the forty two, there's a whole story there. That's the, the question is there, but it's not on this. It's not on the Akeda. In other words, the point of the Akeda is don't do this. But that's what Avram is trying to reconcile. I'm just today drilling down on what's this conversation between the two of them in the call and response. I skipped a part of it with the Avi Hineni Bini. Just drove right into. Uh, uh, Avram saying something ambiguous to his son. For Rashi, it just depends where you put the comma, right? God will show us the lamb, comma. But if there isn't the lamb, so then you're the Ola. R Radak says, yeah, but come on. The pshat is that he told him, God will show us the lamb, my son. And the point of Radak is you can read it on both planes. He said something to him that was ambiguous. And as you pointed out, Shelly, could be that he's 37, in which case he's going to get the subtlety. Or it could be he's five or four or something like that, and he doesn't get the subtle, which all begs the question, how old is Yitzhak Avinu at the time of the Akedah? How old is Yitzhak Avinu? Now, here maybe for the first time ever in our history as a Shi'ar, the people in person are a bit of a disadvantage. I'm going to read you something from the Pirkei Rebbe. Yes, it's only on the screen. I'm sorry. I'm, I should have printed it up. I didn't I didn't think ahead enough. But I'm reading, I'm putting something on the screen. It's a Pirkei Rebbe Eliezer, written Rabbi Eliezer uh, Ben Horkonos. He was one of the Tanayim, one of the Reb Rebbeim of Rabbi Akiva. And he has a Sefer, which is published. It's called the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. It's Midrashim, Agadic in nature, um, as opposed to the Mechilta and onward, which is already Medrash Halacha. And uh, Medrash Rabbah is another kind, is a later uh, 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 genre, not genre, it's the same genre, but the later later uh, versions of Midrashim. But Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer is pretty early because it's Tanaitic in nature. So just, just to, to note a, a couple of, of things here. Uh, so first of all, it says explicitly in Pirkei Dervil Yazer, explicitly in Pirkei Dervil means explicitly in the Medrash. It doesn't mean it's Dabshat. It says, Ben Sheva Ushloshim Shana Haya Yitzhak Belechtel Harmari. He's 37 years old. Vishmal Ben Chamishim Shana. And Yishmal is, uh, is actually uh, 50. Uh, there was a competition between Eliezer and Yishmal going on. Um, Yishmael is saying to Eliezer, Avram is going to sacrifice his son. Uh, and uh, to them, the only thing that could happen here is liter the literal sacrifice of Yitzhak himself. Was, Avram doesn't tell them that either. They conclude that's the case. Not a fool. Yishmael's 50. And he says to Eliezer, hey, I know that's what's going to happen. And Vani hu b'choro, Vani yoresh, et Avraham, I'm going to be the inheritor. Even though he ejected me, I'm still the inheritor because I'm the eldest son. You've been you're divorced. You got thrown out. You're like a, like a, a man divorced wife. You you're you're gone. Sent out to the desert. I was never cast out. I live in the house. I'm Eliezer, and uh, I'm worthy. Therefore, I'm going to be the one who is uh, is going to uh, going to be the individual to take over. And the, the, the heavenly uh, voice, the, the um, uh, divine spirit uh, responds, that's not correct. And in point of fact, actually what's going to happen, uh, 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 you will not inherit. 
Rather, by Mashlishi Giu Latsofim, they came the third day to the Tayelet. They came to the, the lookout, not really the Tayelet, the Tayelet, because that's north and this is south, right? But they come to a, to a high place where they can look out and they can see what's going on. And um, by the by, the commentary here of Rav David Lutzato just points out uh, the, in his commentary, how do we get to the idea that Yitzchak is 37? The math is very simple. The math is that it describes, and he says that many hold in this direction. It's right down here. I won't read the whole thing inside, but he basically says the way we get to this uh, is the fact that Sar Imenu dies at 127 years of age, immediately following, maybe even in the wake of, maybe, 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 also in Midrashim, as a result of the Akeda. She dies 127, Torah says that. We know she was 90 when uh, she became pregnant with, with, well, 90 when she had, you know, when he was born. So that's 37 years, 127 minus 90. So he's 37. So obvious that that's the case. And uh, the Zohar Kaddish goes in that direction. The Midr- many of the Midrashim go in that direction. So just, just to understand what that, uh, what, you know, what that, what that uh, means and uh, the importance of uh, and the strength of that argument. We're going to see the weakness of that argument in a minute. But by almost least on the third day, they got to the, to the place where they could look out. The Kevin Shigiu Lat Sofim, when they already uh, arrived there to Hara Moriah, so Ra'akura Shechina Omed Al Gabehar, saw the divine presence upon the mountain. Shinamar, as it says, Bimush Lishi, Vaisa Avram Adina, Vayara Makam Rachok, he saw it from far. What did he see? He saw a pillar of fire, Ra'amud Shel Esh, Mina Arats Ad Shamayim, going up, pillar of fire, not just a cloud, but a pillar of fire with a cloud at the top of that pillar of fire. Yeah, I do see something on top of this mountain. What do you see? What do you see? He responded. And Avram understood that this is the chosen son. Now it seems, according to that moment, one second, so even according to that moment, that until then, even though God told him at Yitzchak, in Avinu's mind, there's still, but maybe it's that one, or maybe it's that one, maybe there'll be a switch less time. Maybe the switch will be instead of sacrificing Yitzchak, I'll sacrifice one of the other ones. I don't know, it's not clear. But he realized, all right, that it was uh, Ratzoy, Hashem wanted, uh, wanted this, that he agreed that he was more worthy than Ish- the Ishmael or Eliezer. But the point is, the three lads are standing there, they're not some lads, right? They're pretty old, but just uh, something to consider. Yeah, Helen, please. Okay. This is somehow regard to Korach. The subject is All right. the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Fine. Hashem is very clear to Abraham who and what he should sacrifice. Now, in the retelling it to Yitzchak, he is not telling the whole truth. Why not? He's saying God will provide. He already knows what the sacrifice will be. Well, wait, yes wait, and no. <laughs> wait, it's very clear what Hashem says to him. Very clear. Right. Then he tells the Naran, the Nards, don't worry, we'll be back. Right. And the third item is, she told me, a Kohen cannot relinquish his kuhuna. Right. So Esau, although he's kicked out, yeah. he cannot relinquish his second uh, in command position. <laughs> okay. I, I, the last point I'm not going to uh, uh, deal with now. We dealt with it. I, that, that was what I was saying actually a little before you came in this morning was the idea that there is a case to be made that Avram Avinu is speaking to Yitzchak Davka with more subtlety. If he catches it, he catches it. And if not, then not. That Davka, that's what the Radak is trying to say. There's two planes. He spoke to him on one level. God will provide another level. You are it. But he spoke to him on both levels at the same time. I was trying to, that's why I spent a long time in the shows before you came, unfortunately, this morning. But I'll let you what you can watch the recording after about why it is that we are, we're up to that moment. Why is Avram speaking that way? It has to do with what is the age of Yitzchak. And also, I spoke about, again, not to rehash the whole shear now uh, in response, but let's say that's what it means. Uh, what do those words actually mean? What are the po- other possible interpretations of that, those words, which on the level of pshat to you and to me seems fairly obvious, means a sacrifice. That's where they count these things. But if we're walking with Avram and Yitzchak, and Yitzchak is 
maybe just getting the news because his father's carrying wood and he's carrying the knife and he's carrying the the uh, the fire, whatever they're going to use to make the fire. And and they're walking now. Yitzchak saying, "Wait a second, we're missing the main ingredient here, Abba. Until now, I let it pass, but now I'm running out of options. What is so? God will show us what it is. But it's 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 not entirely clear, believe it or not, even though it seems very clear to us that when God said the words that it has to uh, willy-nilly be interpreted as an actual slaughter and sacrifice of Yitzchak himself. But that's not something that they know at this point in the story. So the la is the wiggle room? It's not that it's wiggle room. It's that Davka in that ambiguity, it leaves open the possibility that Hashem said, didn't say do A and then not do, don't do A. It's as Shem said, A, but really they didn't understand, they don't fully understand what that means. It's clarified later as do A, but th- you don't you don't understand what A means. I said elevate him, and you did elevate him. You tied him, you put him on the altar. This is Rashi's understanding, yeah? Uh, others others don't see it that way, but that's how Rashi sees it, and especially, especially if Yitzhak Avinu is just uh, sort of asking in innocence, and Avram doesn't tell him outright because he's leaving it open. Will he understand it or will he not? That's on Yitzhak to understand. He, do- You know, it seems... According to Rashi, uh, that they have the same, based on the Madras Rabbah, they're the same heart. But whereas the Pirkei de Beliezer makes it very obvious that Yitzchak takes as, an, as a given, is obviously uh, 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 37, when you keep reading in Pirkei de Beliezer, you don't have this in front of you, I apologize. I'm just going to tell you what it, what it is. So, Amar li Yishmael, Avram said to Yishmael, Uli Eliezer, Urimatem klum be'echad min Do you see anything on these mountains? Amar li said to him, Lav, no. He said, you're like donkeys. Stay here with the donkeys. He said to him, the donkey didn't see anything. You don't see anything. You stay with the donkey. One is like a donkey. And I gave you this other interpretation last time. I'll repeat it now. The word chamor is a laden word. Pardon the pun. It's not just a donkey, but it's Lashon Chomer. Chomer means matter physicality, corporeality, chomer as opposed to ruach, not seeing the spiritual dimension, just seeing literally what's in front of a person. There's a lot of drushes over here for Parshat, uh, uh, Parshat Bo, when they leave with the chamor, it's, Av, it's Moshe Rabbein riding the chamor back to Mitzrayim, Parshat Shmot, it's Parshat Bo, they leave Mitzrayim with the chamor, it's the, not the chamor, but the aton of Bilam. we have to understand that when we get there, we're not up to that, but just to realize, he told them, you're so physical, stay here. Now listen to the next lines. Natalat Ha'itzim, this is the Pirkei of Eliezer, of Eliezer ben Horkonus's rendering of what's happening in the Torah. He can't countermand what it says in the Torah, but where there's wiggle room, he can tell you, no, this is what it means. Now listen to what he says. Natalat Ha'itzim, when a tanan al gaba Yitzchak, v'lekach ra'ish v'lemachal b'yado, v'yomahalchin shnei mechdav, he put the wood on Yitzchak, and then he's carrying the fire, the, the knife. Amar lo Yitzchak le'aviv. Yitzchak said to his father, now you keep in your mind what it says in the Pshat, in the Torah, and now listen to Rabbi Yitzchak Horkinus's version of this, and Yitzchak is, for sure, according to Rabbi Yitzchak Horkinus, 37 years of age. So, Bayom Yitzchak Aviv, Avi, Harea Eish Vaitzim Heichan Hu Ola. So Yitzchak says to his father, Dad, Abba, right? Here is the fire and here is the wood. Where is the lamb? Vayomer lo Avraham, and Avram says to him, Elokim Yirelo Hasel Ola Bni Atahu Haseh. Period. That's the rendering of Pirkei Rebbe Eliezer. God will show us the lamb for elevation offering, my son. You are the lamb. Meaning, according to Rebbe Eliezer Ben Horkonos, he told him. That's what it means. He told him. He told him full on. Now you have to ask Rebbe Eliezer Ben Horkonos if that's true. So why didn't it actually say Atahu Haseh? <laughs> How come it didn't say? And Pirkei Rebbe Eliezer is teaching us here. So obviously, he did tell him proof positive. That's the explicit telling. That's what it means. Elokim Yirelo Hase Ola Bini, comma, Ata Hu Hase. God will show us the lamb. And do you know who the lamb is? You're the lamb. In other words, it's not left open to ambiguities for, uh, for um, you know, for, uh, uh, for what's, what's going to be happening next and what's, uh, what's, what's going on. And is it, is it, is it not? It's not, it's not subject to that question anymore. We know the answer. The answer is, you're it. Done. Finished. That's that's the whole that's the whole story. Okay. According again, this is probably the Yazir and Horkinus's view. 
And it's a very deeply ingrained view that obviously Yitzhak was 37 years of age. In closing today, we only have two, three minutes left. I'm going to, uh, here, you can see it in the Chumash. Ibn Ezra entertains another idea here in Dibra Matcha Be Mashlishi. I apologize profusely. I don't have, I don't have more than one copy uh, in right. I have to photocopy for it. I'm going to put it on the screen. We understand that there's another way of seeing this. And it's not one is right, one is wrong. Uh, but, but Ibn Ezra was, he was a Pashtan in the, most positive sense of the term, Pashtan, not a simpleton, Khalila, but he wanted direct literal meanings. Like what is what is the Torah conveying? And what was added as other layers, it's not incorrect, but they're not the shot of what's happening. So here, there, there's a, a, a little description, Bayom uh, Ashlishi, uh, Shiyatsmi Be'er Sheva, by the way, in other versions of Mikro Akedolot, it's not on Pasuk Dalet, it's on Pasuk Vav, Zayin Chet, on our Pesukim that we read today. It so happens in Torah Chai, in the, the, the Mikro Akedolot Chumash, Torah Chaim from Mosad Rav Kook, they put it on Pasuk Dal. That's their manuscript. But others, again, have it have it later. So, Bayom uh, Shlishi on the third day from when they left Be'er Sheva, Yeshramim, Eich Amar Avram Venasuva. How could he have said, how could it, some some say, how did Avram say, and we'll come back to you, we'll bow, and we'll come back to you. How could he have said that? Vachim Anu, right? Uh, uh, others answer, Ki Haya Bedatala, Aviat Smotav, he's going to bring back the bones. But Avram was really just pushing them off with his words. Uh, uh, so that they wouldn't leave until he came back. Meaning the Ibn Ezra does not accept what those others say, that it was a word game, that Avram said, will come back, and that he meant means I'll be back, I'll be alive, and my son will be carrying his bones. Rather, Ibn Ezra seems to favor the idea that he just was pushing them off with some words that he spoke in order to get them off his back, but also to make sure that they wouldn't leave. As that Yitzchak would not be aware and would not run away. Footnote 30, footnote 30 tells you, Seder Olam, also written from the time period of Chazal, also very authoritative, Midrashic in nature, Midrash Agadah, not Midrash Halacha. Razal Amru, Vratinu Zichon Levracha Amru, Shehaya Yitzchak Ka'asher Ne'akad Ben Shloshim B'Sheva Shanim. That's what it says. He was 37, again, with the calculations that we spoke about. Writes the Ibn Ezra, very important. If these words are words of a received tradition, because they really seem to appear in all the midrashim, wall to wall, everyone accepts. So that's in a received tradition of Kabbalah. Nikabel, I accept it as well. I accept, but I must tell you, but based on a rational, logical understanding, it's not true, it's not correct. If that was true, that he's really 37, then the righteousness of Yitzchak in this story should be much more overt, much more obvious. And his reward should be double the reward of his father. They gave himself over willingly to be slaughtered. There's nothing in the text about Yitzchak, as we will see, as we see till now. Now, other than that, those three psukim, where he speaks to his father, his father speaks to him, and he's carrying the wood. This more by Yitzchak than Avram, if he's 37. But it doesn't mention him, really. And it's Valakim Nisait Avraham. God tested Avram, not Yitzchak, yeah? So there are others who say, Shaya ben Chameshanim. Others say he was only five years old. Gamzeli Tachin. I don't think that's possible either. Why? Because he carried all that wood. If he's five, his father gave him a pile of wood. Vakarovilladat. Shaya Karov Liyud Gimel Shanim. Very beautiful. He's Bar Mitzvah. He's, when is his Akeda? The Akeda is when he's Bar Mitzvah age. And therefore his father forced him. And he was able to overpower him. He would tie him up. He gave, did tie him up. Look, that his father hid the secret from him. From him. Ve'amar, Elohim yireh lo haseh, ki lo amar lo ata ha'ola, According to Ibn Ezra, here's this testimony. His father hid the secret from him till the last minute. He told him, God will show us the, the, uh, the, the lamb. If he had told him, you're the Ola, overtly, it's possible he would have just run away. He's 13 years old. What do you want from him? Now, there's so much to unpack here, right? Oh, please, Faith, go ahead. My question is, is if this reading is right, yep. he didn't know them, what, why, why does Thomas repeat the Yakut Nehem Yaksa. Like, what would what would the like what would the answer the Rashi, to that be? By yeah. the Rashi's reading, it's very it explains clear. why it says a second time. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
uh, okay, so it'd have to, it'd have to a- answer, whatever it'd have to answer. The, an- the answer very simply could be, they had the conversation, they still walk together, they still doesn't know. They walk together, one knew and one didn't know. He asked them the question, asked and answered. Okay, they kept walking. I mean, it amplifies the silences too, doesn't it? That the, the fact that it mentions they're walking, because after that, you don't hear any conversation. The next pasuk is going to be already tying him up. But the idea of Ibn Ezra, again, and Ibn Ezra opens a door for us here methodologically. I close with this. There are midrashim and there are midrashim. And he opens with saying, if it's a Kabbalah, means like a received tradition, like that's the authoritative understanding, so I accept. But I must tell you, logically, I have some trouble with this. First of all, the text itself doesn't talk very much about Yitzchak, except as object. He's not really the subject, he's the object. The subject is Avraham. Avram gets up, Avram gets ready, Avram goes, Avram's walk. They're walking together, right? Avram takes the atzeh ol. He puts it where? On his, the object, on Yitzchak, his son. And there's only one little glimmer where the son, uh, where are we going? Why are we doing? What's where? Eh? And he answers him, okay, that's it. And they keep going. But the, the idea of the Ibn Ezra is, I don't think either that he could be literally a five-year-old, but if you say he's 13, around 13, then maybe his father can still overpower him. And you see, based on the Pshat, Ibn Ezra, yeah, what about Ibn and Horkinus? It's a Medrash, and it could be, if it's authoritative, I accept he was 37, there's no other way to view it. But Ibn Ezra says, look, but it's it's possible that the Pshat is the Pshat, because even though Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkinus and the Seder Olam Rabbi want to say he's 37, and that really he said the words, Ola, he didn't actually say those words in the Pshat. Why did it leave it out? Now, Radak, who lives later than the Ibn Ezra, does have a more nuanced view that he was telling him something on two, it was a double entendre. He told it to him in a way that if he can get it, he'll get it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. For Rashi, he totally got it. For Rashi, he's for sure 37. And for Rashi, the heroics is Avram and Yitzchak, further, who had his big trial, his big test at age 13 in the Torah? And according to the Madrash, one of the lines of the Madrash is in fact- Yishmael. Exactly, exactly. Yishmael has his Brit Milam when he's 13. And the Madrash describes a conflict where Yishmael is saying to Yitzchak, oh, yeah, you, you were a little baby when you had your Brit Milam. I was 13, I could have run away. What does Yitzchak say to him? That's one organ. I'd give my whole body. I'd give everything. I would die if I had to. Oh, but you know, what are the dvarim, the words? The words, Yishmael Yitzchak. The idea here that, according to Ibn Ezra, he doesn't say this explicitly. I may be reading this into Ibn Ezra. Karov li yud gimel shanim. Why do you pick 13? Do you say karov li eser shanim? I don't know. Why yud gimel shanim? Davka, the onset of adolescence. Davka, maybe the bar mitzvah, you know, the 13, 13, the parallel with Yishmael, but the point that his father could still overpower him. He wasn't, he wasn't a man. Because the more he's a man, the more we have questions about how did he permit his father to tie him up? And he, there is no other more sophisticated discourse between them. It's a very simple discourse. Vayomer, it's very simple. Now it could be he's 37 and he's asking it because when you're in it, sometimes you don't know. Or he's asking because he really does know, but he wants confirmation. Like, where are we going with this? Why are we missing the main ingredient? We're going up the mountain on this whole journey. I thought we were going to find a set. And Alvin tells him, no, you're it. But he he intuited. Why did he ask those questions? Or those who feel like, why did he ask those questions? Because he already sensed there's something here that's very deep and very heavy that's going to happen. And his father, obliquely, again, according to Rashi, more directly, according to Radak, more 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 subtly, tells his son, "You understand what's going to happen now." They didn't have to say it, but even as it says, "Yeah, but I don't know." That's that's the shot is doesn't tell you the age. Now you'll say to me, "What what about the calculation?" I thought, "Sorry, Menu dies 127, right?" So again, we've talked about this many many times, and I have to close now because I see him seven minutes over. The juxtaposition of two stories does not mean that chronologically they happened five minutes after each other. Could happen 10 years after, 20 years after, 30 years after each other. If if you sh- if, if it's, it's like 13, we know for sure he's 37 when his mother dies because she's 90 when he's born. So that we know. We know he's 37 then. But maybe the Akeda happened 20 years earlier, which would destroy the causal link between the Akeda and 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 Sari Menu's passing, which is its own question. Is there a causal link or not? That we're not up to. Don't bring that up. 
we'll get to that when we get to the end of the Parsha, and we're into Parsha Chaisa, which won't be ready till next year. But, um, okay, today we learned three Pesukim, Zion, Chet, uh, uh, Vav, Zion, and Chet. We didn't even learn them entirely in depth because I didn't do the Avi Bini part, Hineni Bini, Hineni Hineni. Maybe we'll leave that for next time. Um, next Monday, God willing, we will have a shear. Reminder, this Thursday, there isn't a shear. We'll be coming back, God willing, from a wedding. But we will resume the following Thursday in Baalina Latova with Malachim Aleph at that time. So come back next week, same time, same channel, 9.15 a.m. Have a great day. Okay. That's all we have time for today, everybody. You know, hope but hope so you enjoyed. Many-